Hey everyone, Duke here, and today we are going to go over 7 useful Destiny tips that you may not know about. I got this video idea while discussing a few of these tips on stream the other day, and hearing just how many people had no idea that these things were even possible in the game, so I thought that there may be others that would love to learn about them as well. Getting right into it with tip number one, the chest piece swap. There's a couple different ways you can go about doing this, but for me, the easiest way is to have two chest pieces. Your main chest piece with all the mods you want to use during the encounter, and a second chest piece with double reserves of whatever ammo type you want, such as fusion rifles. This tip will work anywhere that a rally flag exists, such as in raids, dungeons, or even patrol spaces. You will want to start with the second chest piece equipped, the one with reserves, and rally the flag with that chest piece equipped. Once you have rallied the flag, you can switch back to your original chest piece and keep the extra reserves while getting that extra defensive mods on like Concussive Dampener or Resistances. Do note that dying, however, will reset your ammo back to normal max, and you can't pick up ammo to go back to those extra reserves. So if you use a couple shots and then pick up ammo, you're still going to be back at your normal reserves rather than your double fusion or shotgun or whatever other type of reserves you would use. My second tip is continuing with raid flags, and is what I call the perma flag. The short of it is that if you place a rally flag at the right time, right as you're starting an encounter, the flag will permanently stay there for the entire encounter and be usable inside the encounter, hence the name. What you'll want to do to get the maximum value from this tip is to rally once and wipe first, so that everyone has full ammo and supers, and then do this trick. This will allow for rallying the flag mid-encounter, as previously mentioned, which will re-up your ammo and supers. This can be very helpful in many different places, but I've personally found a lot of value with it in Master Atheon and Master Templar challenges, as ammo economy in these encounters is exceedingly difficult to deal with. The next three tips are all material economy-based tips. Tip number three is something I've used for a long time, hoarding ships for extra glimmer reserves. If you don't already know, the glimmer cap in Destiny is 250,000. By using a few different potential cosmetic items, my two favorite are Zavala's Authority and Other Side Sparrow due to the exchange rate that you get back, but theoretically this will work for any ship or sparrow in the game, you can basically store extra glimmer in your vault. Using Zavala's Authority as an example, you can buy this ship for 7500 glimmer and 5 legendary shards. Then, later when you need glimmer, you can dismantle it for 5000 glimmer and the 5 legendary shards back. This allows you to use any inventory or vault space to basically store 5,000 Glimmer for situations that you may need Quick Glimmer on the spot. I almost certainly have more ships worth of Glimmer than I will ever need, but especially during expansions when there's a lot of new gear to use and upgrade, it's nice to have some as backup. Tip number four is a similar idea as hoarding Glimmer, except this time for extra Ascendant Shards. Just like with Glimmer, Ascendant Shards have a cap. This time the cap is 10 in your inventory, as well as 10 in each character's Postmaster. Just note that anything left in your Postmaster could potentially be pushed out by other drops if you don't keep a close eye on it, so leaving things in there isn't the most safe. What you can do to save even more Ascendant Shards is fully Masterwork Exotic Armor to leave in your vault. This will cost 3 Ascendant Shards each, but will allow you to overcap your Ascendant Shards using that vault space, as you will get an Ascendant Shard back later if and when you dismantle that armor. Of course, it will be more efficient to masterwork exotics you may use first, but if you run enough endgame content, you will eventually want to think about ways to potentially hoard shards as well. Tip number 5 is a way to get around yet another material cap, this time with enhancement prisms. If you need more enhancement cores, and have some enhancement prisms to spare, you can buy blue armor from collections. Any armor will work. Then upgrade it from 5 to 8 on the masterwork level, which will cost 3 cores, a prism, and a few lesser materials. Once you go back and dismantle it, you will get 6 cores, which is a net gain of 3 cores for 1 prism. As mentioned, this is an outstanding tip if you are low on cores, or even if you just want to efficiently use your materials, because prisms have a cap of 50, while cores have no cap at all. Moving away from material-based information, tip number 6 is one that can confuse a lot of people, mainly because the interaction has changed during this season and only works in one direction. As of the making of this video, Particle Deconstruction and Divinity debuffs do stack with each other. 
Honestly, this feels like a bug that may or may not go away at some point this season, as no other debuffs stack with each other, but for now it works, but only if Particle Deconstruction is applied before the Divinity. Therefore, if you're trying to run both of these debuffs, make sure whoever uses Divinity waits a second or two to allow for someone to apply Particle Deconstruction before using Divinity on the enemy. And our final tip, tip number 7. I'm phrasing this tip as Armorer Mods Exist. Armor mods are ghost mods that are new to this season, which allow for a guaranteed 10 roll in the stat of your choice, including a higher chance to get even more in those stats. You can also combine these armor mods with the guaranteed specific high stat armor of Umbral Engrams or Master Vogue to get a combination of two high stat rolls. For example, you could use the Intellect Armor mod on a high recovery armor roll week in Master Vogue, or when focusing a recovery focused Umbral Engram to get higher rolls in both recovery and intellect. I hope that at least one of these seven quick tips taught you something new. If you have any ideas for tips that you have that others may not know about, make sure to drop them in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.